Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com and scroll on down and press School. We've done lessons on display objects, configuration objects and animation, functions and events, abstraction, arrays and loops, and now we're starting Lesson 6 on Conditionals and Debugging. And there's a bunch of videos for each one, so if you've just gotten here, you should probably go back and take a look at those videos, unless you're here specifically for conditionals. Now, we've been working hard on the basics, things like arrays and loops, and sometimes uh, that means it's harder to get to the creative coding. We're, we're, we, these are the building blocks for creative coding. We've tried to do it in a visual way with things like rectangles, circles, and triangles, and tiles, and animation, and those types of things. Um, but look ahead. Ooh, lesson seven, we get to do building. So we're going to start building. We have actually seen templates already to get us going here. In the Zim school, we code right in the browser, and so we don't use a template. But later on, like at lesson seven, we say, hey, now let's go out there in the world and build. So that's why we introduced templates at that time. However, with our coding here, when we're learning JavaScript, we started off with a template right away. And then lesson eight on controls, where we have parallax and particle emitters and portals and anything else you can think of that starts with a P. Good. So we get to build with some fun things there. So looking forward to getting to those. But right now we've got conditionals. And let's go into some code to see that. So we'll reduce. Oh, we've got to go get a template. Yeah. So let's go get a template. And that's out on the Zim site under code. We can hit copy copy the template and now we'll reduce this down pop on into our atom and paste the template now scroll right on up and say zim lesson 06 there we go and we're bringing in create.js and zim <laughs> I'm just kind of laughing because CreateJS and Zim probably have a total of so oh, anywhere between 3,000 and 5,000 conditionals. Yeah, we just we use them a lot. Maybe even more than that. Who knows? So what is a conditional? That's a good question. Let's see one. We'll get rid of our circle that's in there, like so. And a conditional, there's another word for a conditional, perhaps a simpler word. Are you ready? If. <laughs> So an if statement is like that. I'll keep these together just for now. So an if what's in these round brackets is true, do what's in the squiggly brackets. And we can also say else do what's in these squiggly brackets. And we could also say if what's in the round brackets is true, do what's between these brackets, else if what's in these round brackets is true, do what's in these squiggly brackets, else do what's in between these squiggly brackets. <laughs> All right, we don't need to have that final one if we don't want to. We don't need to have the middle one if we don't do. And you can have any m number of those if you want, and we don't need to have any of those. Just have this. So if what's in here is true, do what's in the squiggly brackets. So what is this thing inside of here? Well, that uh, is any statement that evaluates to a true and false, which really is any statement. I think everything evaluates to a true or false. For instance, if we put seven in there, that's true. If we put zero in there, that's false. So zero uh, evaluates to false, minus two evaluates to true. So any number except for zero is, is considered true. Even 0 0.0000001, that's true. Just barely true, <laughs> but still true. And, and that's false. Um, the letter A is true. Uh, quote, false is true. <laughs> that's a string. The Boolean false is false. <laughs> well, what do you know about that? <laughs> and the Boolean true is true. <laughs> So a lot of things, a lot of objects get converted to true when stuck inside these round brackets. Um, a new circle, for instance, there that or something there, it's considered true. So if we put a new circle in there, or if we're asking if the new circle is true, that's true. And traditionally, though, we uh, 
we use perhaps um, Boolean operators, things like greater than, less than, equal to. You've probably heard of those. Remember those from back in grade? I don't know. When did you learn those? Four? Something like that. So it would look something like this. Let x equal 5. <laughs> Great. If x is greater than 3, well, I'll have a <laughs> we'll start with a nice high number. Ooh, is that a high 10? And we'll say, if x is greater than 5, then do what's between the squiggly brackets. Let's make a new rectangle. Rectangle. And we will dot center that on the stage like so. So have a look. If x is equal, <laughs> no, there's no if there. Let x equals 10. If x is greater than 5, which it is, right? 10 is bigger than 5. So we should see a new rectangle. Let's see. Boop, boop, boop. Open in browser. Ba, 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 ba. It's a rectangle. Well, what if x were a lowly 3? Oh, poor x. So x is not bigger than 5 right now. So we won't see a rectangle. Bye-bye. Uh, however, we could say else. New circle. Circle. Not center. Otherwise, we would see a new circle. So what will happen now? x is 3, so it's not bigger than 5. It won't show the rectangle. So it will do the else block of code right here. So we save that. And we refresh here. It shows a circle. Cool, huh? So you can have multiple things, like if x is greater than 5, or x is... <laughs> Less than there's not much, not much room to work here. Less than four. <laughs> okay, there, there you go. So if x is greater than five, or that's what this means, a double pipe. The pipe is up above your backslash next to your backspace and deletes. So if x is greater than five, or x is less than four, then show a rectangle. So that's great. Here we have, this is going to show the rectangle because x is less than four. There's also an and. If x is greater than 5 and x is less than 4, it's very unlikely, <laughs> but uh, maybe 10, <laughs> for instance. So if x is greater than 5 and x is less than 10, so in other words, between 5 and 10, uh, but not including either of them, then we'll show the rectangle. Otherwise, we'll so show the circle. So this will show the circle. There it is. How, what about this one? 7. That's greater than 5 and less than 10. So I'll save that up. Check it out. It's a rectangle now. Yay. All right. So there's also greater than and equal to, like that. It comes after, or less than or equal to. Now that would include the 5 and the 10. We saw the ors. You can use brackets in there. So any of that Boolean operation stuff, if, if you need to. <laughs> you know, if you need to, go ahead. All right, so um, what else do we want to do? This is kind of like the odds. It works well with random numbers. Uh, let's simplify this a little bit. We'll say if x is less than 5, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That would be four things. Uh, well, why don't we start at 1? Okay, here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to set x equal to a random number, rand, between 1 and 10 like that. So if we want half the time, we're going to try and simplify this so half the time we get a rectangle, half the time we get a circle. So if it starts at 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's five things. So it has to be less than or equal to 5. And then if it's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I'm using my fingers here, <laughs> That's also five things. <laughs> so I think we're good. You have to be a little bit careful, unless, of course, you're a gambling establishment. Then you could accidentally forget the equal sign. Oh, I'm so sorry that you haven't been winning quite as much as you expected. <laughs> you know, it's more like uh, two. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we have to be careful there. If x is less than or equal to five, then we're going to show the rectangle. Otherwise, we show the circle. Uh, I think I might sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, usually it's even louder than that. 
So I'm hitting refresh here. <laughs> I'm allergic to gambling. Hitting refresh here, and we're getting different things showing up. Now, that was just a square twice in a row. Here's a circle twice in a row. Square, circle, square, circle, square, circle. <laughs> oh, I should be rolling dice. Square, 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 square. All right. So it does seem to be doing something roughly random. <laughs> <laughs> You know when you're um when you're in public sometimes it's hard to sneeze. I don't know how is it doing a video like this. It's kind of hard to sneeze. I don't want to do it. You know, like stop my sneezing. I was just eating bugles and I think I caught some bugle dust. <laughs> That's what I'm claiming. It's merely bugle dust. Uh, all right. So great. But what about if we ha oh we have a random number? Let's perhaps visualize this in a more fun way. Let's visualize it in time. So we're going to... Oh, not another sneeze. Come on, this is too much. I think my nose has started to run now, and that's causing problems. It's exasperating the situation. All right, let's run this in time. So we'll do this with an interval. Interval. And we'll run it every second to start second and we'll call this function. We'll use an arrow function here. So every second we're going to test this like so. And well maybe every 500 milliseconds we're going to test this. The problem is this will keep on adding these things on top of one another. So what we could do is we could remove them or maybe it would be fun to actually see a hist like if we remove them, we just see either a rectangle or circle, and every 500 milliseconds it would it would change or possibly change. But uh, perhaps what we could do is add them to the stage and animate them. Yeah, that sounds like more fun. We'll animate them off so we can kind of see a a visual history of what these odds were like. All right. So if we're going to animate them off the left-hand side, why don't we move these along? We could even call it, uh, will it matter? I guess it won't matter. We'll just move them, we can move each of these. Well, we got to then animate both of them as well. So let's put them in a, a variable. Uh, var obj for whatever object we have, or is it shape of our shape? So we're declaring a shape, and we're going to say shape is equal to either the new rectangle or shape shape is equal to the new circle. We don't have to center it here. We're just going to say, hey, which object is it? And then down below here, we're going to then center it. Shape dot center on the stage, but we're going to move it over a bit. Dot move uh, 200. We could use the pose. You want to see the pose for that? The pose now has the centering ability. I kind of forget sometimes. So pose, how much from the right-hand side do we want to start? How about 200 from the right? We'll pose 0 from the middle. So we have to say right here and center here, or middle is fine. It's funny, my keyboard drops my E a lot. All right, so we've just posed it 200 from the right-hand side and zero from the center. So that's great, but we want to animate it and we can chain that right on there if we so desire. We can say shape.pose and then right in here, dot animate. And what do we want to animate? Is it simple? Yeah, it's pretty simple. So I don't even think we need that. We can just put the properties right here, uh, the X property. Oh, I just had a thought. If we animate to an X property, the circle center regged the shape or the rectangle is left edge. And if we're animating to a specific X, we could do relative, uh, but it's a little bit easier to just animate to minus 100 or something. And then it animates off the left hand side. If we don't animate it to an absolute position, I'm not really sure how much of a relative, like it would be the stage width minus 200 and then minus another. <laughs> I'm kind of going, uh, But the issue is the shape has its registration point and the left would animate at a slightly different speed, <laughs> weird, <laughs> uh, than the circle. And it's actually noticeable. So we'd want to 
dot center reg that. Then we can position it. So this centers the registration point of whichever shape and the animation to an X of colon minus minus 100 will be fine. They'll they'll go at the at the right thing and probably we want a certain time, I don't know, three seconds. That oh might have to be faster because we're putting them there every 500 milliseconds. Well, let's see. Shall we try it? See what happens. Dum, dum, dum. Some creative coding. We're making an assembly line. We are making an assembly line. Circle. Oh, it's got easing on it, and that's a heck of a lot of circles. So <laughs> I think our odds are a little broken. Uh, we'll slow that down. I think 3,000. And what was the problem? The ease is the problem. We want linear. I think that's the next one anyway. So, quote, linear like that. I hope it's the next one. And why are we getting all circles? Ah, do you know why? Because we rolled a random number outside of the interval, so that's just always the same. <laughs> and if it happened to be less than, it's always going to be less than. So do you see what we need to do? We need to move the let x up into here so that it's inside the interval, and that means that every time we run the interval, we get a different random number. And now we should have a, a better assembly line. Circle, rectangle. Oh, nice. That's a lot of rectangles. OK, that's fine. So isn't that neat? That's a visual representation of odds. Uh, yeah, that's, about, that's about it in our assembly line. Doot, doot. I wonder if we could change the odds. How could we change the odds dynamically? Like, oh yeah, let's put a slider in the bottom here and we'll use a slider. So if it's at the left, we'll make more circles. And if it's at the right, we'll make more rectangles. Now, I know we're not exactly concentrating on the basics of a conditional, but heck, it just read you know, it reads pretty easily, doesn't it? <laughs> You're probably okay with that. All languages have a conditional like that. We've been using them in math for ages. If you've done math, hopefully you have. If you're if you're like 10 years old, <laughs> all the power to you, man. <laughs> this is maybe your first conditional. Uh, anyway, it's just like in statement. Like, if you're good, you get candy. <laughs> right? So uh, that's, that's great. And this is what uh, the odds and stuff. This is what shapes artificial intelligence. If 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 everything did it at the same way every time, it would be really boring. But if you you can set odds based on things like based on random numbers, obviously, but you could twist those odds or, or change those odds based on say how long you've been here or how many things you've seen in the past or if a slider is at the left or at the right. So let's uh, try changing up the odds, shall we? And I think it's good to see the conditional at work here. It's really important. We, we, we It's almost second nature for us as coders to use conditionals. Um, and it will be for you too, yeah, as you learn JavaScript. All right, so we were mentioning a slider. Uh, we will put the slider up here. A, and we'll give it a, const here, const slider is equal to a new slider. And we will go with a min of 1 and a max of 10, like that. I think the min is 0 and the max is 10 by default, which means you have to be a little bit careful there. If you're rolling a 5, if it started at 0, that would be different odds. All right, so there's our slider. We will position that at the bottom dot pose in the center, so at the bottom in the center, zero, comma, ooh, 100 up, comma, center, there's that drop D again, center, and uh, that, oh, bottom, bottom, the bottom, all right, so that's a slider down there at the bottom, now nothing's going to happen, it'll be a slider, uh, one thing is, where do we want to start the slider? Do we want to start? Probably in the middle, right? So let's start the middle, the slider in the middle. Slider dot current value equals five. Is that the middle? One, two, three, four, five. Is the, maybe there is no middle. Five. Yeah. Oh, well, 
5.5. Uh, actually, does the slider, ha yeah, if it has no steps, if we don't specify steps, that's fine. 5.5, is that in the middle? It doesn't sound like it's in the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, I guess it has to be 5.5 if we want equal odds. And as soon as we go over to 5, that's under 5. As soon as we go above. Ah, anyway, I I, bleh, I was up till 3 o'clock last night. <laughs> that's my excuse. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, I can't handle 5.5. We'll just start at 5 and whatever. It's going to be close enough. All right, so there's a start, the slider starting in the middle. And now where, where are we using that slider? How are we going to set the odds? Well, it's this. This is always middle-based. If it's less than or equal to that, it's um, uh, basically the slider's current value is going to go there. Did you figure that out? Whatever the slider's current value goes there. It starts off at 5, so roughly half the time it's going to be, maybe exactly half the time, it's going to be uh, a rectangle or a circle. But if we move the slider so that the slider is 2, then it, if x is less than or equal to 2, happens not very often, right? So it's not going to be a rectangle very much. It's going to be a circle more so. So to the left, it will be a circle. To the right, it will be a rectangle. Shall we see it happens? Happen? <laughs> happens in our factory. Isn't this cool? We got a factory. So there's the equal factory. And it said, no, 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 I want more circles. Da, 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 da. There's a lot of circles already there. So now we go over here, and it's just giving us all circles because we're right at the very end. How about every once in a while we won't get a circle? Circle, 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 square, circle, circle. Right? What if we want more squares? No, no, we've got too many circles. Come on, give us some squares. We come out over here, and now we're getting all squares. Oh. <laughs> Right at the end, now we're getting all squares. Isn't that amazing? Cool. So if uh, if squares were happy, you'd have a happy robot. No, I want a sad robot. So you could tune your robot. <laughs> we're tuning the assembly line. Actually, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Can you imagine assembly line going that fast and you're watching the world? Uh, what do they call that? Um, how much somebody needs something. <laughs> it looks like the world needs more of these, more circles, please. And you know, you just crank the lever. <laughs> brr, brr, more circles. Nice. Well, uh, how about that? That's a conditional. There might be some nuances of conditionals that we've forgotten to tell you about. But uh, we had a pretty good time making this factory, huh? I think so. You can set odds for all sorts of things, like um, for the colors of stuff, for how big things are, for if they win or lose. Uh, I tend not to like games of odds or games of chance all that much. And conditionals are certainly used for more than that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Conditionals are being used for games of odds, but uh, yeah, they, they are used for more than that. It, 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 it's the flow of your code. So uh, it, it's all throughout. It's all throughout code. You'll see lots of examples. You'll see that if statement in there. All right, this has been a learn JavaScript with creative coding. And if you like this, <laughs> if you like this, then perhaps you'll also like to see we've got a new video. Let's check it out. Drone. Now, someone who is controlled by someone else. Droner. Now, someone who controls a drone. Droning. Third, act of controlling a drone. Droner, control your friends. Wow, okay. That was for another mobile mediated app. Uh, by this guy Dan Zen, and I don't know, uh, do you recognize anybody in there? That central figure at the end there posing, 
That's Pragma. <laughs> oh, isn't that amazing? So we'll see you next time. Come on into Zim at zimjs.com and come on visit us. Come on and visit us at zimjs.com slash slack. If you want to hang out, there's more people each day. Share this video if you wouldn't mind. Share the whole series with people, especially if uh, you're learning code with a bunch of folks in, in school or friends or on Twitter, you're supported by, uh, by people there. Please, please give this a share. We would, we would love it. We put a lot of effort into this and we'll see you next time. Ciao.